This is Kimberly Quinn, host of the Minecraft podcast, and I can't tell you how much fun I have had doing this podcast. I, I started when the world closed over the pandemic in, a, in an attempt to spread some positivity out there and give people some strategies to enhance their own well-being and reduce anxiety and all that. Now, two years later, we're still going strong and now listened to by 52 countries across the world. And I've even helped some of my students get going with their own podcasts. It's super easy to do. And I'll tell you, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. I'll just explain for you. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It is a ball. Start today. Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another uh, delightful discussion today, another Minecraft discussion on all things well-being. And remember, it's about thoughts come first and feelings come second, actions and behaviors third. It's about becoming the boss of your brain. This is how we live our highest vibe, most just our best life possible. Okay, my name is Kimberly Quinn, and today I'd like to talk about working with what we've got. You know, we're offering waiting, waiting, waiting for this to happen, that to happen, things to be perfect, which is a very bad word. You're better off dropping the F-bomb than using the P word, the perfect. But it's like after this is done, after the house is finished, after the kids leave and go to college, after, 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 before we start actually living life. And my inspiration today is coming from Sarah Von Brednick. I just love her. I had her, her book on simple abundance back in my, I think in my 30s. I, I don't even know. And I was, you know, for the most part home with the kids and I would just read it every day and it just gave me such a lift. But anyway, she talks about this waiting thing that we do. You know, we get it in our heads. We play these little tricks in our heads with, you know, once this, once that, then I can start, you know, picking up that hobby again. Then I can start doing this again. Then I can, and you know, then (laughs) there's, there's no promises for tomorrow. We all know, we all know that I think, yet we don't really consciously know that because we don't, we don't behave that way. And Sarah starts out with a, a quote from Rainier Maria Rilke, which is great. And it says, uh, if your everyday life seems poor, don't blame it. Blame yourself. Admit to yourself that you are not enough of a poet to call forth its riches. Because for the creator, there is no poverty and no poor and different place. You know, this kind of goes right back to, you know, being the captain of our ship. Or often I say, we're the artists of our own canvas. And so many people talk about this. Some of the greatest thinkers out there, I'm thinking Dom, Dom Miguel Ruiz with the Four Agreements, you know, creating your own heaven. So many people talk about creating your own lives. And uh, there's just a lot of them out there. Wayne Dyer, as you know, I love him. Oprah, my greatest, two of my greatest teachers. Joe Dispenza is a new one I listen to. All talking about creating the life you want to live. So if you're kind of humdrumming it and bored and this and that, I'm going to wait and I'm going to start kayaking, you know, next summer. I know I realize it's gorgeous today, but you know, once I pay this off and pay that off and do this and that, the, the, the canvas is going to stay blank until we just grab it, grab the average day. I remember somebody said to me, um, this is related. When I wrote my first book it was right before I wrote it and I had four out of our five kids and I don't remember who it was. So don't don't wait, you know, and think that you're gonna just sit down and hammer out five chapters in a row. Like I'm gonna set aside Saturday, the whole day, or Saturday and Sunday if you're that got that kind of a uh, you know uh, time available. Don't think you're just gonna just go hide and do that. And wow, never, uh, w- you know, w- it was just so incredibly accurate because in my the four out of my five kids were five and under or six and under. I don't know. All four of them were very, very little. And I, I'm so glad that that person said that to me because really it's slow and steady wins the race. And I, I once I let go of ever having, forget it, a whole day to myself with four little kids home, you know, having, you know, just thinking you're going to carve out three hours because it might happen and that's great. Maybe somebody takes a nap, maybe 
um, you know, uh, dad takes him for a spin in the car for the day and goes someplace, maybe, good, run with it. However, for the average every day, though, I learned to write just a page here and there, two pages when somebody was napping or get up really early, early in the morning or late at night. But it was just little bits. And that, that this is true in life in general. Even if we're not writing a book, we've got to work with what we have. We've got to work with the bills, the debt we owe. We've got to work with the condition that the house is in. We've got to work with the fact that we have little kids at home. We've got to work with the fact that we have a big commute or whatever it is. And, and, and then, you know, yield, sort of yield to it and suck the marrow out of the day despite all those circumstances. Um, so so there, uh, Sarah continues and she says, up until now, many of us have secretly believed that we had to wait until things calmed down a bit before we started to get our acts together. Tomorrow we'll begin discovering authentic pleasures. Tomorrow we'll treat ourselves better. Oh, isn't that a big one? Totally. Tomorrow we'll take the time to enjoy ourselves. There you go. Tomorrow, when everything calms down, I, she is just so spot on with this. How many of us do this? When I do this, when I do that, we put we put off having fun. And somebody else just came into my head at this minute. Loretta LaRoe, she's a comedian. Um, she's from New York and listen, I think Brooklyn. And listening to her accent is just like a warm blanket and a cup of hot cocoa. And she talks about it. She's a she's a comedian, talks about stress, and she talks about don't put off having fun. And she does this whole thing with why don't you just put a casket in the living room, lay in it, and be done. And she says that. And she, she's very funny the way that, that she delivers her information. And she said, well, you know, th it, basically this is not a dress rehearsal. This is the big game. We need to stop putting off to tomorrow we can do today. And then Sarah goes on. She says, this I can report from the front lines. Life never calms down long enough for us to wait until tomorrow to start living the lives we deserve. Life is always movement. Oh, isn't that the truth? Always change, always unforeseen circumstances. There will always be something trying to grab your attention. The phone call, the child, the fax, the car breaking down, the check that never arrives in the mail. Let's let's just acknowledge that as far as real life is concerned, we're only one step away from dealing with dysfunction. I think many of us can agree with that. I, I, with me, I certainly am well aware of the inertia of life, um, especially because my husband and I are so blessed to have five amazing young adults who were five amazing little kids at one point and very, very good. They were very good. You know, you have those moments though. You obviously, you get overwhelmed. You, you're juggling five kids. And I remember at one time we had five, it was when they were like in the like a middle um, childhood, five kids on six baseball teams. That doesn't even sound mathematically possible. So <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself, we're, we are blessed enough to have two parents in the house because that isn't the case for everybody. And we were having the heart, like, how does anybody do this, you know? And we, I would, you know, I put off all kinds of things just to survive baseball season. I mean, I totally get it. And then she says, so what are we going to do about it? We can stop waiting for life to become perfect and start working with what we got, what we've got to make it as satisfying as we can. That right there is the solution. Whether you've got little kids at home, whether you're dealing with an aging parent, whether they're, no matter how, we, no matter how stressful it is, obviously we're not talking about the curveball of a phone call that comes with something horrible. Everyday life, though, this is your everyday taking care of the aging parent, or most days of the week. Your everyday where you're at home with kids. It was a, I absolutely love to be home with, with my kids. Um, again, and then you still have to be very, very proactive to carve in to carve time for yourself in this. So this is what I'm saying. The the um, it, it can really feel like, like a runaway train. And so the way to deal with it is kind of accept and acceptance is the key to most situations, right? Or solution, most acceptance is the key to most problems. Well, I didn't want to say problems at first because I was talking about being home with the kids and that was definitely not a problem. So it just circumstances. So acceptance is, this is, this is how it is right now for us being, you know, whatever the situation is. And so I've got to work with it in order to not, in order to prevent my life minutes I'm just, you know, spinning down the drain without taking any time at all to do something that makes my heart sing. That's what we're talking about. We can accept, bless, give thanks, and get going. Today, we can be begin to call forth the riches from our everyday life. Today, we can move 
from lack to abundance. Oh, I love that one. Procrastination has robbed us of too many precious opportunities. Call a friend for lunch, begin to read or even write that novel, organize your papers, try a new recipe for dinner, smile at everyone you meet, sit and dream before a blazing fire. That's one of my favorites. Pick up your needlepoint again. Act as if you're grateful to be alive. Amen. Scatter joy. I love that. Scatter joy. So especially, especially when the inertia, the motion of life picks up and it feels so fast, this is, this is the time to remind ourselves that it is so fast and that even, even though it feels this way, we may have to make an extra effort to, to do something to carve out that time for ourselves because, because before we know it, you know, the opera lady sings her last note and that's it. And then uh, Sarah winds up with, she says, think of one thing that would give you a genuine moment of pleasure today and do it. Let's just say that again. Think of one thing that would give you genuine a genuine moment of pleasure today and do it. Great. The first steps in the journey are always the most difficult to take. Life begets life. Energy creates energy. Uh, the famous French, the famous French actress Sarah Bernhardt reminds us. I love this one. It is by spending one's self that we become rich. That is awesome. That's what we're talking about. Mindful giving, right there. I just want to say it again. It made me feel so good to say it. Uh, famous French actress Sarah Bernhardt reminds us. It is by spending one's self that we become rich. So here's the thing. Work with what you've got. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today because this is it. This is the big game. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off, signing off from the beautiful northern Vermont. Have a mindful day. So especially, especially when the inertia, the motion of life picks up and it feels so fast, this is this is the time to remind ourselves that it is so fast and that even even though it feels this way we may have to make an extra effort to to do something to carve out that time for ourselves because, because before we know it you know the opera lady sings her last note and that's it and then uh sarah winds up with she says think of one thing that would give you a genuine moment of pleasure today and do it let's just say that again Think of one thing that would give you genuine a genuine moment of pleasure today and do it. Great. The first steps in the journey are always the most difficult to take. Life begets life. Energy creates energy. Uh, the, famous French, the famous French actress Sarah Bernhardt reminds us. I love this one. It is by spending one's self that we become rich. That is awesome. That's what we're talking about, mindful giving right there. I just want to say it again because it made me feel so good to say it. Uh, famous French actress Sarah Bernhardt reminds us, it is by spending oneself that we become rich. So here's the thing. Work with what you've got. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today because this is it. This is the big game. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off, signing off in the beautiful northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.